Hi guys and welcome. In this video I'll be giving an in-depth explanation of the process of this uh, coloured pencil pet portrait commission and I'll be demonstrating how I create fur, especially long fur as well as a number of coloured pencil techniques. I just want to preface this video by saying that I'm really sorry it's been such an awfully long time since I last uploaded here. Long story short, I was incredibly busy and then exhausted with a university placement I had but that's all finished now and I've had some time to recoup, so I should be back to my usual once a week video now. As you can see, I already began with my outline drawn on my paper, and now I'm very roughly blocking in colour with my Derwent drawing pencils. If you're wondering about which materials I'm using throughout the completion of this piece, as usual there's a list of products in the description box down below. I usually start off my coloured pencil pet portraits by mapping in the highlights and shadows first to build up a rudimentary form, and then I'll block in key features, and in this case that will be tufts of fur and similar things. If the animal was patterned or had different colours in its fur, I'd also map these in now too. I'll gradually transition from specific elements to just blocking in the general colour of each area, in order to build up a base layer over the entire dog. As you can see, I'm not being too careful with my application of coloured pencil here, but I still find it helpful to generally follow the form and direction of the fur. This is especially useful on the face, where the fur direction changes a lot. Following the fur direction and pattern that was laid down in the initial sketch means that I continue to have a guide to follow for the rest of the piece, and I can use some of these features as landmarks, so I can keep track of where I am on the drawing to ensure a more accurate result. Once I've got enough pigment laid down on the paper, I'll use liquid solvents to blend out this first layer to create a smooth foundation which I can then build upon. The paper that I'm using here is pastel matte in the colour dark grey. I found that pastel matte is an incredibly forgiving surface. As you have seen, I wasn't incredibly critical with my coloured pencil application. Pastel matte is coated with lots of tiny cellulose fibres, and this micro-abrasive surface finely breaks up and disperses the pigment. And because the paper isn't very absorbent too, the liquid solvents allows the pencil to spread on the paper surface easily. I'm using Zestit Pencil Blend for my liquid solvents here, which are my favourite solvents to use. If I wasn't using pastel matte with my coloured pencils, and instead using something like watercolour paper, I would have been far more careful with my coloured pencil application. I found that even when using liquid solvents on watercolour paper, it can be very difficult to fully disperse the pigments if the pencil has been applied roughly. This is certainly the case with pencil strokes that have been applied heavily and may have indented the paper too, but in a more general sense it can be difficult to remove all evidence of pencil strokes entirely anyway. When using such papers, solvents also only seem to soften and smooth out pigments, whereas on pastel mat you can really move the pigments around on the paper's surface. For this reason, when working on watercolour paper, it's also important to try and apply pencil as smoothly as possible in the first instance. You can do this by using a very light hand, a sharp pencil, and either use careful directional marks to build up the fur, or fill in larger areas smoothly using small circular motions with your pencil. Once I've blended the primary layer out using my liquid solvents, I'll then start adjusting colour and further refining value. Here I use a mixture of Derwent drawing pencils for added coverage, and I also use Polychromos, which have a really great colour selection, and they layer really well to create subtle nuances in colour. Once I've taken the time to build up the colours and values to a level I'm happy with, I'll start further depicting the forms of the long fur. One of the techniques I employ to draw long fur is to blend out the colours I have laid down with the liquid solvents, and then I'll take one of my palest colours to draw in the highlights, and I'll do this straight away onto the damp pigments before the solvents have had a chance to dry. 
Opaque and light colours work best for this technique, so my go-to colours are light sienna, wheat and solway blue in the Derwent drawing range. Because the pale pencils are drawn on top of pigment that's already wet with solvents, it's really easy to mix these bright highlights into the colours underneath, creating soft transitions between the colours. And this makes it really simple to build up form and create smooth and soft blends. This is a technique that takes advantage of that finely abrasive surface that pastel matte has. You can easily lay a light over dark on this paper, but this doesn't seem to work as well on less abrasive papers such as watercolour paper. In this piece, I regret not making my base colours a lot darker, as I would have been able to get more contrast between the base and the highlights, and the progress of building up the form in this piece would have been a little quicker. I started off using a lot of light sienna in the foundational layers, which meant that highlights created with the same colour of course didn't show up. This is unfortunately something I didn't notice until after the solvents had dried, meaning that I had to rework areas a couple of times until I got to the level of depth I was looking for. Solvents have a habit of making the area look much darker than it really is, and I found that in particular it seems to have the effect of making white pigment look transparent. You'll see a couple of times throughout the process of this piece that there's a big leap in the colour of the drawing, and that's where I had stopped the recording whilst the solvents were still wet, and then resumed recording a few hours later after they had time to dry. But to remedy the areas being too light, I glazed over large areas with polychromos colours, so I applied dark or mid-tone pencils in thin layers, and then I smoothed those colours out by using liquid solvents. And here I was careful to blend out areas of fur cluster by cluster in order to not disturb some of the forms of the fur that I had already distinguished. I slowly build up layers of colour whilst making the forms of the fur clusters more distinct as I go. I work from general to specific. I like to think of it as sculpting, where you create the vague shape of what you want, and then you add or sub subtract little pieces to refine the form. Here it's important to apply pencil strokes in the same direction as the fur, as there's a possibility that these strokes will show through in the end product. Also, making the most of your pencil strokes here can add to the overall texture that can be achieved, so it can create lots of depth and interesting variety. I also like to use a variety of colour here, as I think that variation is absolutely vital in realism, and it's especially important to subtly vary the colour over the entire piece. I find that rendering an entire piece with the same handful of colours, and using them in the same way of course, can lead to a flat and lifeless result. Whilst I repeat this technique for a while to refine the entire piece, I'll talk about the planning stages of this piece. So this artwork was a commission piece, and rather excitingly the first commission to result from my YouTube channel. So thank you very much to Gareth from Australia for commissioning me to draw this gorgeous Australian terrier. Once the client had contacted me, I asked them to send through reference photos, and I also gave a list of requirements and preferences for reference photos, and this was to ensure the best artistic outcome. The first reference I received was lovely, although a little underexposed, and the pose meant that the fur was a little ambiguous, but the second photo I received was absolutely stunning, and that's the reference I used to create this piece. I then went ahead and adjusted the reference in order to provide the client with some examples of the composition and the paper colour I have available. Pastel matte comes in a gorgeous range of 14 colours, so I like to superimpose the subject matter on each of these colours in order to work out what complements the dog best, then give my personal recommendations to the client who can then choose something that matches their own tastes and a colour that matches their living space too. Once the paper colour has been selected and I've got the drawing planned out, I'll tape a piece of tracing paper to my computer monitor, 
and then with a soft pencil I'll draw the outline, facial features and other key elements. I then transfer this simple outline to my paper surface. Once I've got a rudimentary outline I'll use my Prismacolor Cull Erase pencils to refine the outline and freehand in more of those details and I'll use different colours of the colour erase pencils to help break down the subject matter and map in key shadows and highlights. Now I don't want to get into the whole pros and cons of tracing in this video as I've already made a video about this topic but using a tracing to place the outline essentially guarantees a perfectly accurate outline in a very short amount of time so this means that I can spend more of my allotted time for this commission focusing on the rendering of the piece and getting in all of the little details. Anyway, back to the current level of progress. I'm still refining the piece and building up texture and depth. Now I'm also using some Caran d'Ache Pablos as well, and the Derwent Artist Black and White pencils, as both of these are a little waxier and opaque compared to the Polychromos, and they also can hold a fine point, which makes them excellent for details. I use these pencils particularly on the face to build up individual strands of fur. Here I'm really paying attention to the direction of the fur as well as the length of each stroke and the curve. These tiny details will help to reinforce the structure and anatomy of the dog's face. Because of the amount of layers I had applied with my pencils, I was starting to burnish the peaks of the paper's tooth, resulting in a speckled appearance, which isn't a texture that I really want in the dog's fur. So to overcome this problem, I used the brush and pencil touch-up texture, which you may see on camera now and again as what looks like a little bottle of nail polish, although it certainly isn't nail polish. This is a liquid that has tiny particles suspended in it, and when applied to coloured pencil, it dries to create an invisible film that seals the layer below, and creates a toothy surface so that pencil can be further layered upon it. I guess it works similarly to a workable or texture fixative, but the touch-up texture can be applied just to the areas you need it with a small brush. That being said, I actually ended up using the touch-up texture on almost the entire piece, and some areas even multiple times. I could have of course used a fixative instead, but in all honesty, I personally find fixatives a little scary, as spatter or poor application could ruin the piece. I also found that the touch-up texture darkened the piece slightly, but that wasn't a problem in my case, in fact I found it quite useful that it did that. And I also found that it helped remove some of the wax bloom and polished finish that can occur after many layers of pencil. Another benefit of the touch-up texture is that it can be mixed with brush and pencil's titanium white pigment powder, to create a white mixture that can be applied to coloured pencil work to create dazzling highlights, and I found that in particular this is perfect for whiskers. If you're a coloured pencil artist, I seriously recommend picking up these two products. The brush and pencil products are specifically designed for use with coloured pencil, and thus are archival. I've seen many coloured pencil artists use and recommend water-based products, such as gel pens and Posca pens for creating highlights over the top of coloured pencils. In fact, I used to do this too. However, water-based products do not adhere well to the oil and wax in coloured pencils. So this means that your highlights will flake off over time, and this fact is what pushed me to purchase these two products. Unlike the water-based products, the brush and pencil products will not flake off. In the final stages of this drawing, I work on amping up the contrast and adding in the tiny little details. For example, I use individual pencil strokes to draw in stray hairs or smaller fur clusters of just a few hairs. Making these fine hairs overlap the larger fur clusters gives another sense of depth and dynamic, 
instead of the fur appearing to be static and rigidly clumped together. I also work on the stray hairs and wispy fur around the outside edges of the dog, and I do this by slowly building up colour, lots of pale colours again, but being sure to include some of the mid-tones, and slowly graduate the pale areas into the darker fur slightly further in, following the same fur direction. I used a paper blending stump to soften some of those edges too, to give an even more diffuse appearance. And here's the finished piece! I'm so pleased with the outcome, it was quite a journey, and I feel like I learned a lot whilst creating it too. I loved working on all of those tiny details and building up the softness in her lovely fur. I hope you found this video helpful and interesting, and if you did, please leave it a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to stay up to date with my future arty videos. If you'd like to see sneak peeks, bonus footage, and behind the scenes action, follow me over on my social media. I'm Claudia Sketches on Facebook and Claudia.Sketches on Instagram. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.